investor. You know, I've got gold, I've got stocks, and at the moment I've been writing cryptos for the last uh, eight or so months I've been in the crypto world. Sometimes I've sold stocks way too early. So uh, do you have any ideas or tips? Or, does it not work with investments or what? <laughs> I haven't had any success being incredibly <laughs> intu- I've, I've never had 35 times gains in the stock market and I've done hundreds of trades in the stock market. So, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Gilbert, Gilbert Gilbride Oswald Free. I am a motivational speaker, purpose, relationship, and life coach. And I'm going to be your host for tonight. I'm here with Mr. Adrian Cahill, who is an NLP trainer, ICF PCC coach. Adrian started a community in Shanghai in 2012. And today, this community is still largely growing every day in China. We also have Sarah Boss, who is an intuitive coach. And Sarah is an educator as well, a holistic healer and an entrepreneur. These are the people on this call or on this Zoom session that we're having today. Thank you for having us. So moving forward, Mr. Adrian Cahill. Hey, thanks very much for that, Gilbert. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, we just had a wonderful session with Miss Sarah Boss here. And honestly, the first time, and perhaps the first five times I saw Sarah, I kept thinking, Sarah Boss? Really? But it is, it is really, it is really, really Sarah Boss. And we just had a wonderful session about intuition. Now, I do this NLP and ICF thing, and sometimes, well, most of the time, we wear like this kind of business shirts. But it's even in the ICF guidelines icf by the way uh, international coaching federation it's like the most professional and largest coaching organization in the world they even have large sections about intuition and intuition is scientifically proven so it's a real thing so it's been absolutely wonderful to hear sarah share today uh but sarah uh, i'd like to go deeper into just a couple of things and maybe we can talk a little bit and share a nugget or two a nugget, like a little gold nugget, a little piece uh, for our audience. And uh, I think Gilbert uh, was in the chat room a fair bit, so he might have a few more questions. So I think the first one is, uh, how does how does intuition speak to us? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so intuition really is that connection to your your inner voice. Um, it's something that one of the ways that you can distinguish really between intuition and the conscious mind is it's spontaneous. It's fast. Um, it's not something that you need to sit and deliberate. It's quick, like the blink of an eye. Um, a lot of people refer to it as a gut feeling um, and just having that knowing, the knowing of something without, um, without necessarily knowing how that you know. Um, and uh, the thing about intuition, when people ask, what's the difference? How do I know it's my intuition and not my mind? Um, or, you know, the, the mental chatter is that it's usually, it's, it's a quiet voice. It's, it comes from a place of calm. Um, and intuition, it speaks to us in so many different ways. Um, internally, yes, but it can also manifest through our environment. And it does manifest in our in, in our environment all the time. We just need to be tuned in, present, and aware. Um, so to give you an example, yeah. So I was dating this guy um, who had uh, he had traveled extensively in Asia, and so he specifically had mentioned living in Shanghai and loving it. Um, so I went. I had this job interview, and it really was my dream school. But um, I still wasn't sure. I knew that they were going to make me an offer, but um, I didn't know if this was this was really right, even though. 
everything really was right. I mean, everything that I wanted, um, they were offering me in terms of being the perfect school in the perfect location, being in an area with expats, um, having the opportunity to travel, abundance in terms of, um, you know, uh, salary. Um, and so I knew they were going to make me the offer. And I was taking the train back home to New York. Um, and then um, randomly, because the guy I was dating, it was a long distance relationship, he just sent me a message. And then he said, um, oh, how are you uh, he didn't even know I went to an international job school fair. And I said, yeah, I got this offer um, in Shanghai, but I don't think, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to take it. And he said, I think you really love Shanghai. And if you go, I follow you. And I was what you follow me and he said sure of course I, I follow you to Shanghai and so that was kind of the confirmation because I had this fear of just going on my own and just being totally in this new place and and alone and that was a confirmation that I needed from the universe to really um to to align and, and take the job that being said we broke up the summer right before um I moved here so I ended up starting you know this this new journey by myself but um I really feel that that relationship also that was supposed to happen because he was the um kind of he helped me in that way to to really give me kind of the push i needed to be able to go and then start the next um uh the next uh, i guess chapter of my my life journey here yeah <laughs> that's pretty awesome that's pretty pretty awesome wow wow mr cahill can you can you tell us a bit about your background and why NLP. You know. Yeah, I like that. I'm hearing all these crazy stories about intuition. So I'd like to share a little, little short story or two about intuition. Mm -hmm. uh, there are various forms and some people have like um, this thing called clairvoyance. I've known about that for years when people can see things. I've never had that. But sometimes I just know things. And I remember being in the military and we had a, you got to use your intuition in the military. But well, we, we have a boozer, uh, you know, a little pub we go to. And this lady came around with tickets and there's like, you know, 500 numbers on this chart. I just have this strong feeling, you know. I, I, I had a look at the chart and there were a couple of numbers at the back and I circled two numbers at the bottom. Two numbers right at the bottom. Uh, and obviously, you know, about an hour or so later, they, they called out the winner and I won. And I didn't really even move or flinch. I had a little smile. And I went, no. Nah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the reason was, was because they had, they had a couple of prizes and I went, no, nah, it's okay, I'll, I'll wait. And I went, what? No, no, I'm going to win the next one too. <laughs> yeah, for real, I'm going to win the next one too. Uh, and I won the next prize as well. I don't know how the hell it happened, but I just had a strong feeling and uh, I got first and second prize in this thing. And just like uh, a week before this, I went into this little casino place and it wasn't a normal casino. It was a fundraising casino. Uh, and uh, I went in and for some reason I saw the roulette table and I just saw this like number staring at me and I, okay, I put my money on this number. And as you know, in roulette 35 times or 36 times and it just put it on and, you know, first been there, it was collected the money, which was being donated, collected the money. And I was just like, huh. So I learned back then that sometimes I, I just know something. Sometimes there's just a real strong sense of knowing something. It's just an incredibly strong sense of knowing something. And I can't describe how on earth that happens. I, I don't buy mm. tickets. I don't buy lottery tickets. I don't do raffle tickets. It's just I had a real strong feeling about this number. It's just I just know. Show me. And I went straight down the bottom, it's like those last two numbers or, or the uh, roulette. That number is just sometimes things are just looking at us. We just know it or see it or for some people hear it, sense it, whatever. You know, and that was back in 2006. And ever since then, it's just been like, boom. I know for a fact that there is a much bigger world. There's a lot more things than we know. I'm from a very cynical, kind of critical mm -hmm. background. And I'm from the military, yes. And my whole family will talk about this spirit stuff as if like they're, they're weirdos. And Reiki, Reiki is something you do on Saturday morning, you know. 
but uh, this is totally true. So when I, when I hear Sarah share this mm -hmm. intuitive thing, <laughs> I want to know how to get my intuition higher. And actually, I've got a question for Sarah here because where I haven't been really successful and what I would like to be better in, I'm an investor. You know, I've got gold, I've got stocks, and at the moment I've been riding cryptos for the last uh, eight or so months I've been in the crypto world. Sometimes I've sold stocks way too early. So uh, do you have any ideas or tips? Or, does it not work with investments or what? <laughs> I haven't had any success being incredibly <laughs> intuitive. I've never had 35 times gains in the stock market, and I've done hundreds of trades in the stock market. But I've played roulette like twice in my life. Mm -hmm. Well, um, that that's an interesting question, Adrian. So um, I think mm -hmm. it, you know this is probably uh, some of this is is conscious manifestation. So it's also the belief that you're going to do well in the stock market because um, the universe, you are the universe. It's what we say. So your external reality is always a manifestation of your internal reality. I would say as well, universe, if you put the intention out to the universe, um, give me some clear signs about uh, how I should invest my money for the stock market. You will get the signs. You mm. just need to be open. Um, to receiving them. So for example, people, um, there's a whole study of numerology and numbers. Um, there are people who receive signs in the form of numbers. You should pay attention. I would, I would recommend paying attention, for example, if you see a number repeated and you see it multiple times, because that's a sign. Yeah. That's a sign of the universe. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is some of the intuitive techniques that I, I talked about, like intuitive cards, you could do intuitive cards and you would probably, uh, you, you would get a very clear uh, answer as to whether or not you should invest your money into that, uh, that uh, particular uh, stock market. If you're, if you're really uh, centered when you ask the question, because the cards, the cards don't lie. Um, yeah, but if you can do it honestly with the, with the card game, you can do it with the stock market. I have no doubt. Yeah. That, all about yeah, with, with the with the with the answer you gave, Sarah, it, rem it reminds me of um, Will Smith's movie called Focus. And in that movie, intuition plays a huge part, a very huge part in that movie. So yeah, thank you for sharing that insight. You know, with that being said, it means that probably we'll have to be synchronized within ourselves to the environment, right? So my question then is. How is synchronization and intuition related or different? Yeah, um, that's an interesting question. They are absolutely directly related. Um, you know, tapping into your intuition leads to making good decisions because you're aligned with what you really want. Um, and making good decisions leads to synchronicity and then ultimately abundance. Um, so one of the things that I mentioned in my talk was about becoming a conscious manifester. So a conscious manifester is when you are actually aware of the situations and the people that you're manifesting into your life because the universe law of attraction, the universe responds to fixed intentions. So when you're actually aware of what your intentions are, of what you truly want, you will manifest what you want with more ease. And I, lo I love seeing wow. this. I love seeing this in effect, especially in effect for entrepreneurs. Because in the entrepreneur mm -hmm. world, hustling is kind of cool and you should be hustling. But hustling yeah. is sometimes, hustling is sometimes, a lot of the times, it's like jumping in a river and swimming upstream. Whereas these, when you get synchronicity, it's about you are the stream. Mm -hmm. And when you're swimming, you're not swimming upstream anymore. You're swimming downstream. And when you're swimming downstream, sometimes you hit a rock. But that rock can knock yeah. you out. But that rock can also be an opportunity to climb up. So a lot of entrepreneurs, that they've kind of got it wrong. They're too busy swimming upstream. And they're thinking they've got to work harder and harder. Uh, but as, as, uh, as we know, one of the biggest blocks for synchronicity and intuition is trying too hard. So there's a lot of entrepreneurs that are trying too hard swimming upstream rather than actually getting in flow. Yeah, and often when we talk about this in one of our talks, we talk about like the, I think it's four levels. And uh, some people are victims. They're on the side of the river. They're not getting in. You know, they're, they're 
life's passing them by. Mm -hmm. The second level, they're jumping in the river, but they're swimming upstream. And then the third level, they're swimming downstream in their happy days. And then the fourth level is transcendence when you realize you are the river and you're the river. The obstacles mm -hmm. and the resources are all one. So entrepreneurs, they've got to transcend. But the thing is, when you fully transcend to like the fourth level, a lot of the times motivation is, gets zapped away there. Motivation sometimes gets zapped away when we, we lose our ego. So we've got to set up the motivation before we transcend so that we can really just coast along then and enjoy the flow and the fruits of the rewards. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Interesting insights right there. I'm, I'm really, really blessed right now. Yeah. Now I have to be more in tune, you know, within myself and then the environment to see how things turn out. Another thing is, right, as, as you just shared that, I'm thinking, um, when do I know to allow my intuition to take over? When do I know? You know, like in any situation, when do I know to just allow my intuition to take over and stop probably thinking or overthinking? Just when do I know? Yeah, it's, it's really, it's a feeling. You know, it, it's, again, when I talked about being in touch with your body, um, it's, it's just a feeling it's a knowing um so if you're if you're having honestly so in a situation like that if you're feeling a lot of anxiety and stress then it's time to take a step back to do something like yeah. one of the techniques that i suggested like do a couple of deep breaths maybe do some breath work meditate on it um so that this can calm down and so that you can connect more clearly with your intuition when that happens because that has happened to me a lot of times with the i have i've had very overactive mental chatter um that is how i help to reconnect um but you have to do that also that means taking some time sometimes in solitude uh so that you're not influenced by other people because when you ask other people for advice sometimes you're going to get 10 different opinions and what they think is best for you is not necessarily what is actually best for you only you know um so it's just a good question of connecting with your knowing you've got to be doing less things focused on those things and allowing time allowing time for you know the brain to consolidate ideas allow time it's kind of like I'm so, so, so busy because I've got so many plants coming up and I've, I've planted 50 seeds from different plants. That's not how you grow a crop. A farmer grows one or two different vegetables and they focus on, they focus on the harvest. They don't put 50 different types out. So a lot of people today, they've got way too many things out there and they have to run from one to the other, to the other, to the other, and it stresses out the brain. We got to take the time mm. out, get our brains or get our left and right, get it all synced together, mm. get our nervous system center and calm. Yeah, I was just going to say that um, it can't. Your intuition can't guarantee the outcome, but it can you. It can help you understand and be at peace with the outcome, whatever the outcome is. Mm -hmm. Sarah, can you repeat that again? That's a fantastic point. Um, right. So, um, your intuition aligning with your intuition cannot guarantee the awesome. outcome of the situation, but it can yeah. help you understand peace with the outcome. Intuition cannot guarantee you that outcome, yeah. but it can outcome. guarantee your peace with the outcome. Mm -hmm. It, can help, it wow. can help you understand and be at peace with the outcome. Wow. Wow. I'm going to say this somewhere and I'll reference you. I'll reference Sarah Boss. Yes. I'm going to reference Sarah Boss for that. <laughs> Thank okay. you very much. Thank you very much. So in concluding, in concluding, yeah, in concluding, what, what are your final words for, for us and even the listeners out there with intuition? Um, I would just say that, you know, I really feel uh, today after everything that's happened with a year uh, of an international pandemic, um, that this is a moment, um, it is a, a very important moment um, for uh, really going within and connecting with your intuition. 
Um, and this is a moment where now people really truly are connecting because they are realizing that there are major life shifts to make. Um, so connecting with your intuition really will help in acknowledging um, this connection, the oneness um, and tuning in will change not only your relationship with yourself, but your relationship with everything else, the way that we interact with, with each other on the planet. Um, and it will lead, I think, I, I feel very strongly to, um, to uh, a better world um, and a more high vibrational world and um, a collective consciousness that is uh, based on empathy and kindness and compassion and all of the values that should bring us together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So that's it for today. Well, hey, um, some wonderful points shared. I really love the talk, yeah. Sarah. Gilbert, thank you for hosting. Yeah. yeah thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. So once again, once again, I've been your host, Gilbert, and we've had Adrian Cahill and Sarah Boss. And if you want more, you can contact them in the comments below just contact us and then we'll make them available to you yeah thank you very much for watching <laughs>